A very warm welcome to you on another edition of the program Media Talks with me at DBC at Daytonji. It is always my pleasure to bring your way experts in the media industry, people doing great and amazing things, people doing things differently in the field of the media space, whether in the traditional or digital media. The Media Talks is a platform that affords anyone looking to make a success of their media professional, whether you're just starting out or you're already in middle management or you've already spent a number of years as a practitioner. This is where we inspire, motivate, learn, relearn, unlearn and equip ourselves with the skills, with the knowledge and information that can help us to succeed. You don't have to limit yourself. You can be so much more. Today we'll be talking about women in sports. Yes, sports, sports, sports. Often we find that it is a men's zone, the male gender, you know, have taken over the space, the world of sports. But a number of women have taken up the challenge to enter into the space and the world of sports to make an impact and make a difference. Who says a woman cannot do so well in sports reporting and programming? Now, the lady, my guest today, is someone, when I first listened to her on radio, I was I was baffled and I was pleased at the same time to hear a woman present sports in such a way that she could actually match her male colleagues and she she does a very good job of presenting sports program and sports news and i brought her on media talks today to learn about her secrets her journey to talk about how she's doing it and how she can inspire other women in the sports space or the ladies that want to succeed presenting sports program I have with me blessing for who way she is a sports journalist who hails from Obia, the local government area in Osho State. Blessing for Owe holds an MBA degree from the European Sports Business School, Valencia, Spain. Blessing for Owe has covered several sports events, both within and outside of Nigeria, some of which include, but not limited to, the 2016 Half Beach Soccer Afghan in Lagos international and intercontinental games involving the super eagles of nigeria the 11th africa women's cup of nations championship held in ghana november 2018 the 12th and 13th african games held in morocco and ghana respectively blessing also attended the world youth forum in egypt in 2022 as a journalist and as a participant blessing is a goal getter obviously and a good team player who is pushing the frontiers of female sports analysts, broadcasters, and presenters. Make welcome with me this sporty female presenter on the program, Media Talks. You are welcome. Um, I'm so excited to have the only and first female uh, uh, broadcaster uh, sports presenter, analyst in Oyo State. And I tell you, when she's presenting, I always wonder who is this woman that is just, you know, on top of her game. She talks sports like the guys. It's like she matches them. She, she just matches them and she speaks from a place where people like us that don't really like sports. <laughs> we are like, ah, this is a woman talking sports. <laughs> Wonderful. You're welcome. Yeah. Blessing. To Uwe. Yeah. I'm so pleased to meet you in person. Finally, virtually do. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, great to meet you as well. Uh, great to be on the, on the show. And at the moment, there are a handful of women into sports you know, journalism presentation right now in Oyo State in Ibadan. So, I mean, you I were may the have first, been right? Yes, I was, yes. yes, I was the youngest at the time. Okay, you I were the, the youngest. youngest at the time. Yes. The only other person who was also into sports journalism then as a woman was uh, Mrs. Olabi of uh, BCOS. When I came okay. to Ibadan, I met her. So she was like the only person 
the only That's female, you know, yes, uh, I, think yes I, I, on, think I, I know her. I remember the face. Yes. Remember the yes. Face. So, so when I came in, I was the only other woman and also the youngest at that point. That was back in uh, 2015. And the, and Gen, yeah, Z, the Gen Z, the Gen Z sports female <laughs> voice. <laughs> I'm actually not Gen Z though. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, which are you? Are you Alpha? <laughs> I know I'm a millennial. <laughs> You're a millennial. Nice. Yes. Nice. I'm a millennial. <laughs> nice. But you sound like a Gen Z. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I know. Just of course. We have to be able to, you know, re uh, reach out. I feel like that millennia is like that, uh, that bridge between, you know, the ones before us. The and the ones so exactly, yeah. so we're able to like merge both together and also. I think it's a, it. it's a good place to be in. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I know, right? <laughs> so, how did this all start for you? Have you always, you know, dreamt of, you know, working in the media space? And was sports even? A consideration in the first place when you started out in your media journey so i never thought that i would be on radio to begin with i never thought i would do anything in media whatsoever all i knew at the at the beginning was that i loved sports i loved following sports i don't know maybe it's because i'm the only girl in amongst my siblings I'm the only oh wow girl okay no wonder yes. you have been here. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. People say that a lot. I have three brothers, so I'm the only one in their midst. So I don't know if they kind of roped me into supporting sports, but I know I'm into loving sports, but I know I've always loved sports from a very, very tender age. I mean, we did a lot together. I mean, I played football with them. We broke things at home playing football because we, we couldn't go outside, you know. Nah, I hope your mom... <laughs> not of course you she did it her, i don't know you gave her a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, i think she, I, I, she they gave us a free hand anyway she put it that way so they didn't allow us to go outside to play so we could only play inside the house so we practically turned the sitting room into you know a playing field when they are not around and even sometimes when they're around they allow us to play a bit so so um the interest kind of stemmed from there you know just okay. loving supporting started watching football and then when i got into the university to study microbiology from the federal university of technology Accra, um when i was in in uh, my third year going on to my fourth year, my i think third year second semester so yeah. i some of my friends who noticed that i loved sports and you know they noticed the how i you know tend to discuss sports with them right from at the very beginning when we got admission and then they kind of pushed me and said you know what you can actually go for director of sports for the yeah. department of microbiology for me i'm a very shy person so i felt like guys I, are you guys serious you know what you're talking about me how how do you want me to do that you know so they kind of pushed me i became i contested i won i became director of sports for my for my department and one of my very first responsibilities as director of sports back then was to organize a, a novelty match you know between the then uh outgoing students and of course the rest of the department just to celebrate them and you know as they get ready to graduate so one of the things i did there was to organize that game and for me uh, i'd always been listening to radio though i love listening to radio but i never thought i would work on radio okay uh, so i met while while i was in the process of organizing that particular match i met somebody who was already on radio in, in Futa then because Futa had a radio station, a campus based radio station. So the person was already on radio. And then I got in contact with that person. I mean, it was just for us to just talk, argue sports normally, just, you know, discuss about football stories, argue there. All of right? it, as the hobby, yes, just as just, you know, play time and discussion. And all of a sudden, I just need, invited me to the studio. And that was the first time I would ever see the four walls of a studio, you know, to know what it looks like. Wow. So invited me to the studio. And my very first day, I thought I was horrible <laughs> because <laughs> I kept using repetition. I kept using words, you know, repeating words over and over. I thought, okay, this is not for me. I'm sorry, I'm done. But surprisingly, the, the GM of the station at that time said, you know what, call her back. We loved what she did. I'm like, wait, you loved what? Are I you mean, kidding? I thought I was horrible. <laughs> I'm telling you, I thought I was horrible. I mean, I, I still have recordings of those early days when I go back and listen to them and I'd be like, wow, you've come a long way, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, that was how the journey started for me. I began. I became a student volunteer at, at uh, Futa Radio. Uh, that's in our career. And you know, we were a bunch of young people who were very, very enthusiastic about sports. People began to listen to us even outside of you know uh, the the uh, university community, even to the uh, to the state. People started listening to other stations. Started taking note of us. They started inviting us as students to please wow. come. We love what you guys are doing at Futa Radio. Come and come, come and join us. You know, just one or two appearances here and there. So it was from there that I thought, okay, maybe there could be something here. There's something here, yeah, to pursue at pursue at the end of the day. And I was really, really scared to talk to my parents about it, particularly my dad, because I know how they are very, very 
I mean, they are, you know, the average Nigerian parents, you have to be serious with your books, you know, take yes. it seriously and what have you. So I was scared to tell my dad at first because I thought, okay, you'll be like, is that what I sent you to school to come and do, you know? I imagine. But surprisingly, surprisingly, I, I, I it was the, the opposite that I met. I met the opposite. Like, my dad was so happy. It was like, wow, that's great. It became I my see. biggest cheerleader such that, while I was in school, he knew the days that I was going to be on air in school on the campus radio. He would call me before the shows and be like, okay, so have you heard Justin Mourinho did this? Chelsea did this? Arsenal did this? Are you he going to talk about it? to your gist. <laughs> Basically, he was you know, trying to help me prep you know, before. And then he would tell me, you know what, when you go up there and you mention your name, your name is Blessing, my name is Mourinho, so do well to you know, have represent you. <laughs> <your> name. <laughs> a proud daddy. <laughs> exactly. So I had the support from the very beginning. So it was it was almost seamless for me to when I decided, okay, I wanted to take this as a career path. I mean, my dad was always looking for opportunities for me, talking to people. Okay, so my my daughter does this. Is there a space there? And you know, so I mean, that that was how the journey started, basically. <laughs> so we celebrate your daddy for you know supporting your dream, your 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 passion. <laughs> Yes, and, and just letting you fly. We celebrate him on this show already, Mr. Yes, Fowler. We celebrate you. you thank you very much. <laughs> so, how has it been working as a female sports presenter? What has been the the upside, the benefits? You know, the benefits of being a female uh, sports presenter. So, for example, somebody, a female wants to pursue and do what you're doing. What have been some of the benefits you have experienced? Well, of uh, for me my journey on this job um it has opened me to some sort of opportunities that i'd never thought that i would have i mean that's basically what media does to begin with even yeah. though i do understand that sometimes as a lady as as a woman you you have to do like you have to do twice as much to get half as far i mean because of yeah. the structure of, of of our society but for me it has opened doors for me in uh, in no in no small measures international trips for instance I never mm. thought that I could be, you know, on that pedestal. But yes, I mean, I'm there. I get, I get to attend international events. I get to, I love being on the field much more than yeah. I love being in the studio. I mean, when I first started, I enjoyed the studio vibes. But at some point, I thought, okay, there must be more to being in the studio. So I started going onto the field. And I mean, it was towards my final year that I started getting on field, you know, get to actually be in the midst of the action itself. I mean, and then when I came to Ibadan, I, I mean, I first started attending shooting stars matches, the privileges as a journalist to be able to go to those games, and yeah. then being in the thick of the action itself. I mean, that's one of the benefits that I have gotten that I enjoyed. And um, of course, it's also helped create like a, a persona, like a name, so to yeah. speak, even though I, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person who doesn't really like um, the- The attention. The attention, exactly. I don't really like the attention as such, but in a way, that's also helped your attention. There, there are certain places that you get to, and they'll be like, "Oh, you are the, you are this person." Especially with my voice. I mean, I enter my car in the bottom here, and the, the driver is like, ah, "This voice, I know this voice from somewhere." Are you blessed? I'm trying to hide myself. <laughs> I'm trying to hide myself and pretend. Oh, there are many blessings on radio. I, I say no. I know this particular one. So you know, yeah. I mean, it's, there, there are certain places, there are certain doors that I, you know, possibly wouldn't even think of being able to get through, but I've been able to walk through those doors. So that's one of the things that helped me to achieve. And then um, it's also opened my horizon to see that, you know, beyond the walls of the studio, beyond being on radio, there are other things that I can actually get to achieve in terms of the media space one, also in terms of the sporting world too. I mean, yeah. I don't just want to be the person who reports the story. I also want to be one of those who creates the story. And I say create the story in the sense that I, I like to be um, a, a leader in the sporting space, like, like, uh, like, uh, like, like I'm in the management world, like it's in, you know, in operations, working in operations behind the scenes, being part of those who put those things together for for everyone to, before we even get to see the sports that we get to see on our TV screens, on the radio that we enjoy, that we love listening to, being one of those who brings, you know, actively involved in bringing those things to light. That's one of the things that I, you know, I'm really, uh, that it has helped me to, it has opened my eyes to see that beyond being on radio, there are other things that I can actually, you know, achieve and yeah, the, the ability to be able to achieve those things just by being on this platform, just by being in this in this uh, in this industry, really, that's one of the benefits that I've really enjoyed so far. Amazing and fantastic. So, when you talk about from the back end management, are you talking about the team that puts that actually plans and organizes 
like sports events sort of yeah sort of that sort of that in terms of operations you know organizing events even the business part of sports uh, you see in nigeria I, we don't really tap into the business part of, of sports we sports is mainly like uh recreation to us if you know what i mean like we don't look at it yes, as, yeah. as a business venture as a business, whereas outside yes. of the country exactly outside of nigeria it is much more business than it is recreational i'll give you an example u.s right now okay. the nigerian athletes nigerian athletes for instance right now they tend to want to travel to the u.s to achieve their dreams and of course the u.s has this they've been able to put the, down this platform where you're able to go to school you're also able to you know pursue your athletic dreams or your sporting dreams and what have you and they also make money in that process you know from uh from sponsorship from uh, you know from uh marketing lots the, the business side basically business and organizational side so yes that's one of the things that i mean when i talk about management operations business organization that's one of the things that you know it has opened my eyes to see and one of the things i really want to be able to get into evolved into you know at uh, later on once i i feel like i'm done with radio and you know done with media in a way and tv the, like mainstream media right <laughs> yeah mainstream media exactly exactly so so it, this takes me to the question what are yes. the opportunities uh that are in being a sports presenter as a female that's one number two what are the opportunities for sports presenter generally because you are speaking to the fact that sports presenters should go beyond just you are just watching football you are telling us what chelsea or arsenal or whatever Mourinho or whatever whatever has happened it's bigger than just presenting so i would like you to yeah. tell us the opportunity that is that lies in sports uh, broadcasting or analysts for female and then generally yeah. for sports yeah. presenters what are the opportunities that are okay. within you know working in that sports niche as a media professional yeah so first of us as a lady in this industry as as women in this industry in the sports industry for instance there are not many women generally um i've been very very blessed to be able to connect with other women you know in this industry across the nation we've been able to create like a network where we tend to like rely on each other for opportunities people send okay so there's this thing happening here would you like to go yeah. so the fact that there are not many women in this industry one is an advantage on on, on its own exactly. for for ladies who are coming in which means that you are able to it is saturated really but for the fact that there are not many women it's mean, women it means that when you're coming in you're able to like uh have a niche for yourself you're able to like plan properly and say okay so everyone is doing this i want to be able to do this and i'd like to go about it with a different approach um i'm going to give an example with for instance i have a friend who is also a female you know sports she first started as a sports journalist on radio tv and what have you now she's carved a niche for herself in content production content creation and also in table tennis oh, she's nice. getting ready she's getting ready to um to 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 you know as a as a member of the you know wtt there's wtt what table tennis event that's coming to lagos next month and she's going to be actively involved but this time around working in media and also creating content for this so she's able to catch it carve a niche for herself i mean everyone can't follow football and then sleep with football all through you know there are other yeah. areas where you can think about exactly so in that regard that's some of the opportunities I and mean, the biggest advantage is the fact that there are not many women so which means that when you're coming in you can actually be able to sit down plan and think okay these are the things that i want to do this is how I want to go about it in terms of approach, and I want to achieve something different from what others are doing there. So now, in terms of opportunities generally, um, it's also why I say I, I would prefer for ladies who come in here to think beyond media, think beyond radio. I always tell people who come across me like media is a means to an end for me. It is not the end in itself. It is this. Mm. Uh, it is this vessel that I believe is going to take me to where I eventually want to get to at the end of the day, which I've mentioned earlier in terms of you know organization and business aspect of sport. So this is like a certain spot for me. So if you are coming in, you can consider also improving yourself. I mean, you can't rest on the earth. I talked about studying microbiology for a first degree. Many people don't. I tell people and they don't believe. Yeah. Like, are you serious? I thought you did mass or something. No, I did microbiology yeah. for my first degree, but I've been able to get more courses in the period i mean all through my the years that i've been practicing i've gone to the national broadcast academy at first entrance in lagos i mean i've taken online courses in journalism itself in media 
I mean, I've also taken some online courses in terms of uh, sports management and what have you. So all of these things, by the time you begin to get yourself, you know, involved in things like that, op open yourself up, then you find out that, okay, there are different aspects of this sports industry that I can actually, you know, go over to and, you know, and get to. So like I said, also networking is very important. If you're able to, I've been able to tell some of the young um, people who have also come through me as well. I've spoken to them about networking, like trying to reach out to people and to meet people. Once you're able to network with people, and then you you also see that you grow influence, basically. So growing influence and networking is one of the ways where, I mean, you get to see some of the opportunities that are available, you know, in this industry. Fantastic. So what, what I'm picking um, from you is, generally for female, female, female uh, sports, uh, female in the media professional yes. profession who are interested in sports, you know, sports um, journalism. It's still an untapped space for, for many yes. women. So if yes. you are a female and you, you, you come into sports journalism, sports presentation, sports, whatever, whatever it is, whether it's a business yes. side, yes. a lot of, and opportunities are bound for you to grow, yes. you know, yes. and to have a niche for yourself yes. and the other thing i picked from what you've said is sports presenters should aspire to do much more than just sports news absolutely they absolutely explore they should begin to explore other kinds of sports and have yes, a exactly. niche because for example the your friend that have the niche for herself in you know table tennis yes. it means that any opportunities that comes up in that particular sport She's one of the going first to get more exactly. opportunities than exactly. Uh, I think football is um, saturated. She's exactly. likely going to get more opportunity of you know. Oh, this person is interested in table tennis. Yes. Or this person, tell me which other sports uh, do we have? Uh, um, in, in tennis, for instance, in basketball, I have friends who are you know whose whose yes. area of specialization is basketball, tennis, and I mean they travel all over the country, all over the world for these events. Yes, I mean, they many would. of them all expense paid trip as a matter of fact and yeah, because yes. they've been able to cover it for themselves so yeah yeah they would because it's a it's a it's a space having you know following another other sports apart from football gives yes. you a leverage so yes. it means that not too many of you are covering that sport and yeah, when exactly. opportunities come internationally or locally or nationally when, once people know that you are good in that particular sport, in the reporting of that sport or con content creation in that uh, sport area, they will invite you. So, yes. so I like that thought line that sports presenters should be thinking of having a yes. niche. Everybody yes. should not just face, oh, it's football, it's oh, Arsenal. One direction, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. So I like this. Exactly. Like, what's I the think impact? beyond the four walls of the of the radio of, of, of a studio, for instance, social media is a great tool to also use these days. I mean, there's a lot going on social media. I see many Gen Zs now getting paid on social media. So if you can use that to their advantage as well, it would be great. So you can create content, sports content for yourself, exactly. you know, leveraging on the social media. Fantastic. Exactly. Now let's come down to what what has been the challenge for you, for example. Mm -hmm. What has been what, what what have you had to you know cope with or grapple with as a female sports presenter and how mm -hmm. have you been able to maneuver and mm -hmm. handle it? Yes. Well, for me, I've been quite lucky to be to not have been in certain space that people some people have described or some of my friends have described. I've been very lucky to be able to work with people who genuinely want progress for me. But one of the challenges that I've noticed is that number one you have to be able to command your respect. I mean, mm -hmm. basically, you have to earn the respect. I mean, I've seen people who didn't really respect me at first because they like, OK, what does she know? What does she want to see? As it mean, does what does a woman. Know about what sports? do women know exactly. about sports? <laughs> exactly. But the moment I open my mouth and I begin you know, to speak, they kind of like, OK, OK. So she actually knows. So I've been able to earn that respect. So uh, being, to be able to earn respect from you know the opposite gender and you know even folks in the industry generally that's that that was like a huge challenge uh, but right now uh that's no longer a challenge for me and i've been able to earn my respect over the years and that's one of the challenges that i see many young people who are coming behind also having not been able to earn their respect but uh the one advice i would give in that regard is continue to do what you're do what you're doing uh continue to improve yourself continue to add to yourself just keep doing your own duties and forget about everyone else forget about everything else and then you that respect will come at the end of the day. And one other challenge that I've seen people also have is the 
uh, platform. Many of them don't, they look for platforms to be able to help them, you know, showcase this talent that they have, this gift that they have, this knowledge that they have. Unfortunately, they don't have those platforms. And for some, they're asked to work for free, basically. I mean, many people get to do that. I When I started, I, I wasn't paid. I started as a student volunteer. So I, I wouldn't say I was getting paid, I wasn't. But I, I was lucky enough to be able to have support. Again, support of my parents, particularly my dad. When I was at Metro FM in Lagos, my dad would give me transport fare every day to you know to metro fm from our from our place in Ekotun, which is you know quite the distance you know what i'm saying so that's one of yeah. the challenges that i see that people also face right now as well some i mean some young people that's some of the challenges that they face especially women but again like i said you have to keep your head down and this day it has it looks it, it seems to be as though it is a bit more easier easier in the sense that if you don't you're not getting the platform you're not being given the platform social media has made it so much easier that you can actually create a platform for yourself there I mean, continue to record your contents, continue to record your, in fact, if it's analysis that you want to record, record the analysis, put it on social media, yeah. and then get, before you know it, you start attracting, you know, uh, attracting people who are, who begin to see the potential of what you're doing. The right then, people. Yes, the, and direct people, exactly. So, so that, that for me was, you know, some of the challenges that I faced, but overall, I, I wouldn't really say, I've been lucky, in, in, again, I've been very, very lucky to, to work with people right from, you know, while I was in the university, I've been very lucky to work with people who genuinely wanted to see me grow on the job. I know some other friends didn't have it that way. So yes, so but basically that's really some of the challenges that we get to face. Thank you. So so I, I would also say that um, again, in the media space, there's what you call paying your dues. So being a female sports yes. journalist is, is, is tougher. It makes it harder. Yes. But I think generally, if you want to succeed in this industry, you have to be willing to put in the work. You have to be willing yes. to do some unpaid gigs because that's how you exactly. learn and grow on the job. You learn, learn so the ropes. You yes. able, yeah, yeah, you learn the ropes. So if, if you are serious about, you know, growing, making a career of the media profession, whether as a sports journalist or production presenter, whatever a part of the, the profession that you want to, you know, uh, specialize in, you have to be willing to put in the work. And as you push, exactly. you know, don't be discouraged. I'm just speaking, you know, just, yes. just in case you are watching this and you are thinking, we oh, are putting a lot, nobody's paying me. We all did unpaid jobs. I did yes, unpaid we did. Jobs, <laughs> lots of, you know. And eventually, look at us, you know, look at us today. Yes. You know, so if yes, you give me true. business, you put in the work and keep pushing yourself out there mm -hmm. very, very soon. As you grow, yeah. you will command uh, the respect. So, bless respect, you, do you exactly. play any sport? Do you... Do you do you play any sports? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're okay, so, uh, not doing any. So actually, when when I was younger, I did I played football. Again, the football. Thanks to my brothers, they, we all kind of played football together at that point. So yeah, I played football in secondary school. But when I got to the university, I didn't have that um, that community like where I could, okay, there are fellow ladies who are playing football and I could play. And at that, when I got to university, I knew I could no longer play with guys. You know, <laughs> I have to start uh, putting some sort of distinction between myself and them. So I, I played in secondary school. I played football for a bit in secondary school. But when I got to university, I didn't. And that's when I got into um, as a sports director for the department. And I, I coached my university team for a bit, my departmental team in university for a bit. Just really? a bit. And you then, them in <laughs> just, <football. laughs> I, yes, I coached just a bit. My friends still call me coach to this day. I mean, some of them. So, uh, yeah, I coached right. for just a bit. And I played football for a bit, really. But, and then, of course, a lot of video games while we're young. Uh, play PlayStation with the boys. So, yeah. <laughs> if that counts for anything, yes, I did. <laughs> So I think your your brothers uh, they pretty much contributed a lot to how you thought. Yes. It. <laughs> That's so nice. So uh, in your journey, what's next for you now, blessing? Yeah, so um, it's a good question. It's a good question. What's next for me? Okay. So um, I think I have I, I might have hinted a bit in, from our conversation all through about you know what I'd I'd like. For, to do it eventually in future and like i said earlier uh, media is a means to an end for me it's not the end in itself um it's a vessel that will get into organizational side of sport i want to get into leadership uh, side of sport leadership particularly because that's one area that we seem to be lacking here in africa particularly um 
I mean, again, that's like a subset of the general problem that we have, you know, in the country and maybe in Africa as well. I like to be able to contribute to my quota in that regard. I like to get into operations and sport, you know, leave mainstream media and, you know, get behind the scene and be one of those who get things done, you know, to be able to bring this sport to people that, you know, I mean, to, to everybody. I, along the line as well, I, I like to, I love the system of the system of sport that the United States has, you know, in terms of uh, school sports. Uh, along the line, I'm hoping that I would be able to like maybe find a way to, if we cannot replicate that totally in Nigeria model, that would be able to that would be fitting for our our community, fitting for our, our circumstance, you know, our situation as a country. So we'll be able to like you know identify and further help you know the underprivileged people who have interest in sport or have no means or where with that to be able to achieve what it is that they want to achieve. So yes, um, in a nutshell, I like to get into organization, I like to get into leadership, I like to get into operations. But in the meantime, I'm still on media. <laughs> I love that you are clear about what you want. And you know, in life, if you must succeed generally as well as mm -hmm. in this profession, it's important to be clear. As you grow, you must know what is next. And that's something you have thrown out there. And I, I, I'm also throwing out to our colleagues in the industry. What do you want out of this profession? What do you want to specialize in? As we always say, do not limit yourself. That's I'm very, yeah. very big on. Don't yeah. limit yourself into, oh, I'm yes. a producer, I'm a presenter, I'm a PCA, I'm a you know, mm -hmm. news reader. Fantastic. That's a good way to start. But what else do you want out of this profession? This is what this media talk series is all about. You know, wanting to challenge people to just think beyond the regular. Is that the end? You know, like I joke with some of my colleagues in the industry. I say, do you want to continue to say the time is seven o'clock? I mean, <laughs> you want much more for yourself. On a final note, what's your, what's your, what would you like to say to colleagues in the industry, particularly female sports presenter like yourself? Yeah, um, what I would like to say is to be open-minded, um, be flexible, not be rigid, and that is stemming from one of the things my 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 boss at Splash FM said to me one time like that, Mr. Tundiola, who he did say there was this said to me said you may be doing the same thing with others, but you are not going to the same place. And that's something that I've held very, very tightly onto ever since. So, and to be able to do achieve that, you have to be open-minded, you have to be flexible, you have to be willing to explore and, you know, reach out. Think, think, think about um, things that you can actually, they can actually do to better yourself once, to, to better, to better people around you. I mean, you have to be willing to add knowledge onto knowledge, basically, add knowledge onto knowledge. I mean, you cannot, we cannot, the world keeps changing and you have to keep reinventing yourself, you know, in between. So, yes, uh, be open, be willing to explore and be flexible. That's what I'll say to people. So, I want to thank you for coming on Media Talks. It's, it's, a, it's really, really, I'm really, really, I so, so appreciate you taking the time, you know, to, to be on this show. And I thank you for the, you know, sharing your journey and your story with us and with everyone that will be watching this. Thank you so, so, so much. I wish you amazing things on your journey. And I know that- you Thank you very much. Things. I know you are going to do great things from, you know, that from listening to you, I know you are going to do great things. And when, as you go higher, pave way for other people, other women, yes. pave way for yes. them and you know, hold their hands and, mm -hmm. you know, teach them and lend you know lend a hand to bring in thank them you very much profession <laughs> so thank you everyone for come for for coming this far with us on the show this is media talks and i've been having a conversation with blessing for woe the sports woman analyst broadcaster who plans on going into the business side of sports you know journalism management and is planning to do amazing things as a female in the sports journalism space. I wish her the best. We wish her the best. And I challenge you too as well that you can do this if you so aspire to be a sports female journalist. You, there is so much room for you to grow in that space because it is not yet dominated by female. There's a lot of room for female sports presenters. And one last thing I would like to, you know, every sports presenter watching this to take away, like she always said, is carve a niche for yourself in the sports industry. Carve a niche for yourself. 
don't just do it as everybody else is doing it if you want to stand out and you want to make progress and succeed as a sports presenter broadcaster analyst writer you have to have a niche for yourself beyond just reporting football what else interests you go out of the studio go to the field and you know just expand your base thank you so much catch you again on another episode of media talks with me like I always say, I am rooting for you. We are going to the top together. Bye.